Hey guys, welcome back. So I was inspired to do today's video all thanks to the weather. Now, I'm not sure where you live, but I live in the south, which means that it is pretty hot all year round. Um, we don't actually get like wintry weather until late December, if that. However, as of late, we've had this freak cold front moving in, and because of that, I have woken up to temperatures in like the 20s and 30s. Obviously, I'm wearing a sweater, but anyway, it got me inspired to think about thriller or mystery books all set in those colder months. And it's because of that I thought that I would do a roundup of thriller books to give you if you too are anything like me and you like to read thrillers and mysteries um, when it starts getting cold. You know, I find that the books tend to be more atmospheric. I don't know if it's because, you know, at this point it's getting dark at like 530 or what, but I love reading thriller and mystery books during the winter time and I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to share with you all some of my picks. So that said, let's go ahead and jump into the book. Now, I will say they kind of take place um, in different times. I tried to get them all kind of around the December months because that is like peak coldness. However, I believe there may be one here set in like late November. There might be another one set like New Year's Eve, which I guess is technically still in December. But regardless of when they're actually set, it's for sure between now and the end of the year. Again, peak chilly cold time. You know, it's getting dark early. It's cold. It's wintry, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited to dive in. Now, one quick note before I jump into the books, I did try to put these in order of how graphic they are, going from least graphic to most graphic, and by that I mean, you know, how much gore, how gruesome it is. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about when I start off, but just a note, so if you don't like your books overly explicit, um, and kind of too scary like that, maybe go with the first couple of books that I'm about to mention. But if you like books, you know, the darker the better, then definitely check out the kind of last books that I mentioned. So that said, let's talk about the first book, which this is going to come as no surprise to any of you, starting off with Murder, She Wrote. Now, if you saw um, what video? Did I mention this book yet? I'm not sure. <laughs> but this is definitely one of the books that I have uh, been anticipating. I bought it months ago, but I have been purposefully waiting for the winter months to read it because of when it takes place, which is during the cold. Now, as far as the premise behind this book, it is a closed circle mystery in the sense that it takes place in a um, snowy setting. Everybody is snowed in around, um, I believe, like a ski chalet or something like that, and one person ends up being murdered. And what makes it a closed circle mystery is because um, they're all snowed in, nobody can get in or out, and so the suspect pool is limited to the people that that are at this specific chalet. Obviously, because this is Murder, She Wrote, we've got our girl Jessica Fletcher. She's the one who's gonna be solving the mystery, but I'm super excited about this one, and I think that is a perfect addition to this list to kind of get you excited about or to read when it is snowing because you're gonna have all of those snowy and wintry descriptions. Next on the list is Murder on the Orient Express. Now, part of me feels like I don't even need to say what this book is about because it is Agatha Christie's most famous work or at least one of her most famous works. But if for some reason you are unaware about what it is, it is another closed circle mystery in that it takes place on a train and obviously because of the theme of this video it is set in winter time and somebody on the train is murdered and it is left up to Hercule Poirot the detective to figure out which of the people on the train actually did it this is such a great book um, again I'm not gonna dive into the plot However, um, I will say that it does give you all of the atmospheric vibes if that is what you are looking for. It's set during the winter time, we've got snow. Um, if you have seen any of the Murder on the Orient Express renditions, be it the Kenneth Branagh one or the OG one, which is my personal favorite, you'll know visually <laughs> what I'm talking about. And I think that it is so fun. Um, Agatha Christie is just such an excellent writer. So obviously it goes without saying that this book is chock full of 
descriptions in addition to the mystery, obviously. So this is one because it's only the second one that I listed. It's on the lighter scale. So again, if you don't like your mysteries or thrillers hardcore, definitely check this one out. There's nothing like overly gory about it, um, but it's still a really excellent book. Okay, third on the list, we have The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. Now, I will be totally honest. Um, I went back and forth about whether or not to include this book on the list because it was not my favorite. <laughs> However, I thought that it would be remiss of me not to um, because I know that Ruth Ware is a very popular author and I know that a lot of people really enjoy her works. Um, truthfully, because I listened to this on audiobook, that may or may not have skewed my opinion on the book. But regardless, I still wanted to include it because um, it excels in the atmospheric um, category, so to speak. I think that Ruth Ware does have a way with words that um, allows you to be drawn into the story in terms of where it's set. Um, this one specifically takes place in the English countryside. Um, more specifically at like this older, um, I don't want to say Victorian, but like this older English home um, that is in the countryside, almost middle of nowhere. But uh, regardless, <laughs> you definitely get your atmospheric descriptions with this one. And I would say that that goes for both the house as well as the, um, the UK setting, because you've got your rain, you've got your bitter rain, um, in fact, and the house itself also kind of lends to that chilly vibe, and I mean that both figuratively as well as literally, because um, I know that the uh, main character does a lot of references in terms of like how the floorboards creak because of the cold and how the wind and the rain are biting and all of that. So I wanted to include it on this list. Again, this one is not um, gory or anything at all, but it's definitely eerie, which is something that I really love. Uh, but it's like a separate eerie from say like a Halloween theme story. This one I think would be better read in the colder months. So if this is something that you're that you're interested in, definitely check it out. As far as the premise, realize I didn't tell you guys what that's about. <laughs> um, what we basically have is a young woman who's basically down on her luck. She receives a letter from um, a solicitor telling her to come to this house because her grandmother left her uh, this house. The grandmother has recently passed away. The only thing is that um, she doesn't know who this grandmother is. It's a case of mistaken identity. However, since she is desperate, like literally receiving final notice bills in the mail, um, she wants to go ahead and go to this house, see if she can pretend to be whoever she needs to be to claim uh, the money, the inheritance, what have you. Now, obviously, things go awry. I will leave it at that. But again, if you want those colder atmospheric descriptions, definitely check this one out. Next, we have The Redeemer by Joe Nesbo. Um, this is actually part of his longstanding Harry Hole series. Harry Hole being a detective who obviously in each book solves a different crime. This one, though, takes place around Christmas time, so it definitely has a spot on this list. And um, I think it's really interesting because in this one, we have Harry investigating a sniper shooting, so to speak. Um, he gets to the scene of the crime, he realizes that there's no evidence, and they're kind of flummoxed as to why this particular individual was targeted. But, plot twist, it turns out that the assassination was accidental, meaning that they killed the wrong person. And so now they're trying to correct their mistake, they being this phantom assassin, and it's up to Harry to basically stop this person from um, getting to his next target. Now, uh, like I mentioned, it takes place around Christmas, which is one of the reasons why I added it to the list, and then also the location. This is what I would categorize as a Nordic Noir, um, meaning that it is set in the Icelandic countries. This one, I believe, is in Sweden. Oh, don't quote me on that, but I'm like 99% sure. So that said, you are definitely getting your colder descriptions, your atmospheric vibes. Um, Joe Nesbo in general has a way of writing books that um, feel very authentic and draw you into the location. And so since this one is set specifically around Christmas and those colder months, then you definitely are going to get your fill of that. Um, as well, if you are into crime thrillers and you haven't read anything uh, featuring Detective Harry Hole, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I, I'm, I think this is a fourth book. I don't remember, but like I said, you can basically pick up anywhere. In fact, I know Crime by the Book 
who I follow on Instagram because her blog is just my religion, um, she mentions actually skipping the first book. So you can really bounce around wherever. However, um, again, if you're trying to get something that is set during those wintry months, go ahead and start off with the Redeemer. Next on the list, we have Jeffrey Deaver's The Cold Moon. Now, if you've been around this channel for a while, you'll know that Jeffrey Deaver, um, his Lincoln Rhyme series is one of my all-time favorite crime fiction series. I just absolutely adore Lincoln Rhyme and his partner, Amelia Sachs. They are a crime fighting duo. <laughs> However, Lincoln Rhymes is a paraplegic and then Amelia is a, um, a regular police detective. In this specific one, they are tracking an infamous serial killer called the Watchmaker. And I would say that it's actually one of Lincoln Rhymes' most uh, formidable opponents to this day. And this one actually takes place, I want to say, yep, it takes place in December. And I know that their books are set in New York City. So obviously New York in December, you're definitely going to get your cold, wintry kind of vibes if that's what you're looking for. But in addition to that, um, Jeffrey Deaver does such an excellent job with this series. And you can definitely pick up you know whatever book so if you never have read this series you can go ahead and pick this one up if it sounds interesting to you without kind of having read any of the previous books but like i mentioned uh lincoln rhymes is up against his most formidable villain in this one and i'm super excited because i love the watchmaker i've read him or rather rather read about him in a couple of other books and um Basically having him return in this one makes me really excited because I know that it's really going to be a challenge for Lincoln Rhyme. And um, I will say when it comes to these books, it's more, again, of a police procedural. So you kind of already know um, who, the, uh, who the bad guy is. It's not like a big reveal, so to speak. So in that sense, I would say it's more of a thriller rather than a mystery. Um, I think, what is this, the fourth book in? Um, so yeah, in terms of like the graphicness and the gore, um, it is a little bit strong, well, it is stronger than say like Murder, She Wrote or Agatha Christie, um, but it is presented in a way to where it's, it's not overly gratuitous. So, you know, think of it like a Law & Order episode, mm, no. Think of it more like a Criminal Minds episode. So I would kind of compare the two together in terms of the graphic level, but nonetheless, it's fantastic storytelling. And again, because it takes place during December, you're gonna get those like frigid temperatures and um, cold biting winds, which are really exciting to read about if obviously that's your jam. Next, we have Tammy Hoag's The Ninth Girl. I have had this book on my TBR forever. This one specifically takes place on New Year's Eve. Um, so we're still kind of within the realm of the December-ish cold months. <laughs> um, though full disclosure, if you wanna wait until late December to pick it up, I won't fault you. But this one also is a, um, police procedural slash crime thriller. I believe, let's see, Sam Kovac and Nikki Leska. That is the detective duo that is starring in this one. It too is technically part of a series, but I find that these books read more like um, TV show episodes, meaning that you don't necessarily have to watch them all together. You don't have to read these all in order. You can just kind of pick one up and um, focus on the case at hand. And speaking of the case at hand, this one is really interesting because it is about a <laughs> it's about a serial killer that they're trying to hunt down, um, basically trying to get to him before he kills quote unquote his ninth girl. Coincidentally, the um, the villain's name is dubbed Doc Holiday, which I think is kind of a fun uh, twisted fun, but I think it's kind of a fun take, especially since it's set uh, between Christmas and New Year's Eve. And in this one, let's see. Uh, yep. Okay. It takes place in, Min in um, Minneapolis, which again, I know it gets really cold up there. And I've read Tammy Hoag's book before. She's she does a great job with her descriptions, with the setting and the location. So you're no doubt going to be transported um, to the city and it's cold, dark months, which I know is something that I look forward to around this time. <laughs> Again, even though it's been chilly around here in Atlanta lately, uh, we don't really get like biting biting really cold like sub-zero temps so being able to read about it while it's still like mildly chilly outside is something that i take odd pleasure in um so if you're anything like me or you do live in minneapolis then definitely check this one out 
Side note, I don't know why I said if you live in Minneapolis. Last up, we have Lars Kepler's The Sandman. Now, this one is another Nordic noir. Um, so that said, it's definitely going to be darker in tone. It is the last book on my list. So I would say it's definitely the most gruesome. Um, so again, if that's your jam, definitely pick this one up. But in terms of what it is about, it is about, um, well, Basically, we have the story starting off with a young man walking along uh, in the snow along railroad tracks. And so the police come across him and they realize that he's, you know, in bad shape, basically. So they take him to the hospital. Turns out that this guy is actually um, the same kid who was kidnapped and presumed dead like 10 or so years ago. And so as he starts kind of telling a story about where he's been this whole time, they realize that the Sandman killer um, or abductor is still on the loose. And so it's up to them to try and like hunt him down and stop him. And at the same time, hopefully try and see if there are any of his other victims still remaining alive. Now, Lars Kepler does an excellent job. Um, I mean, the Nordic noir genre in general, I feel does a really good job when it comes to setting the scene, especially since they are typically taking place in those Nordic countries. And because of that, you for sure know that you are going to get your um, wintry, cold descriptions. I love it so much because in addition to that, you are dealing with uh, things that are kind of darker in tone as well and so again I think it's just like a happy medium with reading something that is set during a cold winter night and then it also seemingly being about this um, killer who was on the loose I don't know maybe it's just me and now I feel like I'm being totally weird <laughs> for liking those things but you know it's my jam and if it's your jam too definitely check this one out um, I will say, again, because it's last on the list, it is the most gruesome, so if you like your books dark and, you know, rated R, definitely check it out. It is no murder she wrote, <laughs> which is a good thing, you know, sometimes you do want something lighter like that, and sometimes you want to go all in, deep into the dark recess of your psyche. That's where this book comes in. Okay, so there you have it. I've given you a roundup of thriller books, mystery books for you to read in the upcoming winter months. I hope that you enjoyed this video, but as usual, please let me know if you have read any of these, and if so, what you think about them. Um, the Murder, She Wrote book, I haven't technically read yet. Again, it's been on my TBR forever, but I plan on cracking it open next because now that it is cold, I wanna get in as many of my cold, wintry books as possible before Mother Nature decides that she has come back to terms and the temperature skyrockets again to like 60s, which is not abnormal for Georgia, by the way. But anyway, again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And in the meantime, I'll talk to you guys later. Happy reading. Bye.